In this video, I'm going to share with you five character traits that are essential if you're going to make it in Christian leadership. Well, character has always been important, but it seems like it's never been as important as it is right now because there have been far too many stories of church leaders, business leaders, politicians, athletes, and other public figures whose private walk doesn't measure up to their public talk. They are compromised and they're out of leadership. Now, especially if you're a Christian leader, there should never be a gap between your private walk and your public talk. In fact, the people who know you the best should admire you the most and have the best experience of you, not be covering up for you or dismayed at what they know from behind the scenes. The problem, of course, is that it's hard for those of us who are sinners. Like, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. I've made a boatload of mistakes. But the longer I live, the more I'm realizing that character is everything. Competency may get you in the room, but character keeps you in the room. And above all, character endures. It's basically what your family and friends are going to remember about you for better or for worse after you're gone. And ultimately, it gives you the moral authority to lead, especially today character matters most. So the question is, how do you guard your character in a day in, day out manner? Well, here are the five character rules I try to follow and I think every leader might want to follow. Rule number one, assume that what you do in private will be made public. What if you lived in a way where you assumed that whatever you did in private will be made public. I'm not just talking about like having an affair or other scandals that make the headlines. I mean, definitely don't do that. But I'm talking about less headline worthy, but still damaging things like treating your spouse or kids harshly or turning to porn or drinking to cope with your stress or anything else you'd rather not have anybody know about. What if you lived in a way that just assumed it was only a matter of time until everybody knew what you were doing? Now, that would probably change how you live, wouldn't it? Like even just a little bit. When I first got into ministry, I was a little bit fearful of the level of accountability that comes with the role, but now I'm grateful for it. Why? Because honestly, it's made me a better person, not a perfect person. I make lots of mistakes, talk to my family, my team, my friends, but I'm a better person because of the higher level of accountability that comes with pastoring. Knowing I'm accountable and living as though whatever I'm doing might see public daylight is a good thing. So ask yourself, if what you're doing now was to be made public, would you still do it? There are so many leaders who wish they had asked that question who didn't. So start asking it daily. It's an incredible check on your spirit and ultimately on your actions. Plus the people around you, they're only going to be grateful. Okay, number two, assume that what you say in private will be made public. This one's even a little more nuanced. Sure, you know, for one thing, it's don't do anything in private, but as a leader, Think about the things you say. Think about your tone. I mean, I know you want to blow off steam. You face a lot of pressure every day. It's not easy to keep it together. Plus, it's really important to give vent to your feelings. But are you doing it in a healthy way? Ask yourself, how comfortable would you be if someone had the passcode to your phone and started reading your closed door messaging? or was a fly on the wall in your closed door meetings. Theologically, this principle shouldn't be a stretch for any Christian leader because Jesus promised, right, that whatever we said in private would be shouted from the rooftops. We'll just live as though it was going to be because we'll see this in eternity, but we may not have to wait that long because we live in an age where theoretically every email, every text, every DM has the potential to be made public. A few months ago, I had a situation I was really nervous about, a little upset about, and I wanted advice. Now, turns out that the person I was upset with and the person who is an advisor had the same first name, and I flipped it. I actually sent the person I was concerned about the message, not the person I was asking advice from. And you know how it goes. Gmail auto suggests names, and I picked the wrong Justin will call him. Now, that could have been disastrous if I had been careless with my words or acidic in my tone. I wasn't. I'd been trying to live by this principle. And the Justin I was concerned about actually let me know, fake name, right? He said, uh, I think you got the wrong person here, but there was no harm done. He read my worst thoughts because I wrote that email. It was polished, professional, more than fair. And then we talked about the issue. Now, some of you have accidentally discovered that what you thought was a private DM got posted as an update 
you know, on X or something. Same thing. I've seen this happen so many times on social. Just assume that what you say in private will be made public at work, at home, and in life. You'll be a better person. You'll have less conflicted relationships. You'll sleep better at night. So just assume that what you say in private will be made public. Okay. Third challenge. What is the third rule we're going to have? Number three, don't say something on social that you wouldn't say face to face with somebody face to face. Okay. Social media makes us all a little bit bolder and a little bit stupider. Okay. There's a weirdness to social media and any online communication that makes us think pot shots are worth it, that hurting other people is fair game and that public ridicule is in season is probably not something we want to have endure in our life. Some of the most toxic things ever said to me have not been said to my face. I've had lots of things said to my face, but they've been said by people I don't know on social media. Ditto for you if you've written anything, okay? Just read the YouTube or Facebook comments or podcast ratings or Amazon reviews. Don't get me wrong. The vast majority of like interaction that I have is positive. Good people gather online too. And sometimes the criticism, is, criticism I should say, is really fair. But we live in this one-star universe where people dehumanize other people. And what's missing online is a human interaction, the looking into another person's eyes, the scan of their face, noting the hurt you just caused them, and the realization that they're a person just like you. Look, I am tempted to respond in kind too. I'm tempted to go crazy online. But in the end, there's no point. There's no point in responding because you're not going to win. Nobody wins at that game. The mission doesn't win. And you end up behaving like a six-year-old that can only think about themselves. Sometimes you do need to respond to somebody. But when you do, don't let your emotions get control of your fingertips. Wait a day. Type prayerfully. And when you're responding, know that you are talking to someone made in the image of God and imagine you're talking to them face to face. Maybe you might even try to love them if they're your enemy. I think there's a writing about that. It changes a lot too. Just know this, you can disagree with someone without being disagreeable. All right, the fourth character trait, ask yourself, or this is really a question, five years from now, what will I wish I had done? So I know there's a few verb tenses in that question, but the question has helped me so much over the years. Leadership is emotionally confusing. You get kicked down a lot, you end up being misunderstood, and sometimes you're at a loss on how to respond to a difficult situation. When you're in that place, ask yourself five years from now, what will I wish I had done? And I don't know why, but that question is so clarifying to me. It makes me swallow hurtful words. It makes me search for the high road. Sometimes it makes me push an issue I'm too afraid to push down the road because five years from now, I know I wish I had delayed responding rather than responding. And when you don't know what to do, just ask yourself, five years from now, what will you wish you had done? You will have wish you did not have the affair, that you did not blow up at somebody in public or online. You're going to wish you had thought about it, prayed about it, slept on it. All of those things will just do it now. And then the fifth principle, humble your talk, accelerate your walk. A lot of us in leadership today talk at an unprecedented level. We have YouTube channels, we got social media, we have megaphones. And thanks to social media and the age we live in, uh, well, talking about what we're doing has never been easier, which surfaces the always present tension of wanting to make things seem better than they are. It's a big mistake. It's a big mistake. All right. If you simply make your talk match your walk, the gap between who you are and who you want to become shrinks almost instantly. So I would suggest increasing your personal walk, humbling your talk, and that will surface the always present tension of trying to make things better than they seem. And you can really start to grow as a leader. Bottom line on all of this, work twice as hard on your character as you work on your competency. Now, a final word. Do you know who's most likely to do something they regret and end up compromising their character? Somebody who's on the verge of burning out. And that's a lot of people these days. I burned out a number of years ago. It's the worst season of my life. And if you're tired, if you're depleted, if you're exhausted, the likelihood of you doing something you regret goes way up. So 
I've got a free burnout assessment. A lot of people who are actually burned out don't know that they are. They just think it's normal. And I would love for you to take the free burnout assessment at burnoutindicator.com. That's burnoutindicator.com. Absolutely free. I have some training on the other side that'll help you as well. So hopefully you can do that. In the meantime, work twice as hard on your character as you do on your competency. 